What's going on YouTube family? Welcome to Automotive Life, my name is Lucky, and today we're gonna to be talking about why Apple decided to cancel their program for their new EV car. It's not a secret, the writing is all over the wall. The demand for EVs is simply not there, especially since we don't have the actual infrastructure to charge all these cars across the United States. But just in the last two weeks, almost every major manufacturer has walked back their claims of saying being fully electric by 2030. Mercedes, Audi, Volkswagen, I believe Ford, GM, and a few other ones are all starting to walk this back because they know that it's not possible because of the technology. Now, I said before that EVs are the future and people blew up in the comment section. Now you have to remember, I'm an actual car guy. My daily driver is a 600 horsepower V10 Audi R8. I have a 67 Mustang, my smart car with a turbo on it, and then I'm building my G6x6 on this channel. So I am an actual car person, but I know the writing on the wall when it comes to the future. Now, now, I like to compare EVs with cell phones a lot. Now, nobody wants the old cell phone. They always want the newest, latest, greatest thing. And that's why EV resale values have absolutely plummeted. But also, I'm going to make another comparison. Now, this is going to age myself, but way back in the early 2000s, I bought a Trio Palm Pilot, which was the first smartphone. And I paid $500, I think, $30 for it. It was big money back then. And so people were freaking out. Why are you buying this phone for this much money? And I had my stylist that had a camera on it. And I can actually send pictures through emails back then. And so I thought it was super techy, but it was very, very expensive. Now, after that, it took about seven years of phones just getting more expensive. And then just all of a sudden, we magically had a $99 smartphone. And I remember these things being all over the internet, people saying, hey, sign up with whatever AT&T, T-Mobile, whoever your provider was, and they give you one of these phones for free because they were a $100 smartphone. I believe that we're on the same curve when it comes to electric cars. I believe they're rushing this program way too much. Now, I know the technology is there. I talked about how um, ceramic batteries are definitely something to look into. If it only takes 25 minutes and you get 600 miles of range, that's definitely a benefit. Now, imagine in the future that an electric car actually costs less than a gas-powered car. It will blow people's minds. Right now, it's the opposite. They're trying to push EVs as luxury. But before you know it, it's going to be a cheap electronic. And just like anything else, the more it's mass produced, the cheaper it's going to get. And hopefully in seven to 10 years, a price of an EV will be cheaper than a regular car. So I know we're going to get there. But with all that said, this is where we're at currently right now. So let's go over a few reasons why Apple decided to cancel this program. The very first one is the actual cost of the vehicle. Originally, their plan was to sell it for somewhere around $100,000. This way it's in the upper echelon, but not too expensive. But Tesla has pretty much shown us that no matter how good you get at building an EV, there's always these very hard costs. Now, Tesla's able to control a lot of their costs because they manufacture a lot of their own products in-house so they can control supply chains, where a lot of these other manufacturers are going to be sending their cars out, like was it BYE that sends them to another company that gets them built? Apple was thinking something similar. So what they were talking about is selling the car from hundred grand. Now it's going to cost them over $100,000 just to build a thing. And so what are they going to sell it for? 120,000, 130,000, 150,000. You know, it's already ridiculous. Now, major manufacturers are losing thousands of dollars every time they sell a car. The most craziest one that I've seen is actual Lucid Air. Supposedly they lose somewhere around $225,000 every single car they sell. Now, right now, they're just building them and hopefully once they get to scale, it'll cost less money. That's what Tesla tells you, that's what Rivian tells you, BYE and all these other companies. Everybody's saying the exact same thing. Once we build to scale, the cost will come down, which is true. But I think that the real reason why the costs are gonna come down is because of overall technology. As we see major manufacturers stepping into the uh, EV market, we're seeing a lot more technology pushed a lot faster. Now you have Ford dumping you know, billions of dollars, GM dumping billions of dollars, Hyundai jumping billions of dollars, Tesla putting billions of dollars, all into tech to figure out how to make EVs even better. But one company you notice that hasn't been doing this is Toyota. Toyota doesn't care. They'd rather wait and sit back and let everybody else spend billions of dollars developing the technology while they're just probably gonna buy it from them for hopefully pennies on the dollar. But this all goes back to why Apple decided that it didn't wanna make its car anymore because the fact that it's gonna cost so much to make this car and they don't believe they could sell it for this much. Now, Apple's whole business plan is to make a lot of gross on a product. 
Their iPhones, I think, cost somewhere around $200 to manufacture. They sell them for $1,500 to idiots like myself. Also, the Vision Pro costs about, I think, $1,500 to make, but they're selling it upwards of close to almost $4,000. But this is a large margin that Apple's used to. So why would Apple wanna jump into a car segment where they have to invest billions of dollars just to make hundreds of millions of dollars in the next five to 10 years? It's gonna be about five to 10 years for them to actually grow their infrastructure to where they actually become profitable. And for Apple, they just don't wanna waste their time or the headache. The other big thing is their claim to fame was originally the car was supposed to come without a steering wheel. It was supposed to be 100% automated, it would drive itself, it would be the future. You know, you could rent out your car. Now, remember, uh, Tesla's been promising us this since what, 2018, 2019? And everybody since is basically catching up. Now, I believe the technology for being a fully self-driving car are, I think is about 10 years down the road because everybody's using very expensive tech to figure this stuff out. But I'll put it this way. You ever see those cars driving around with all the cameras and, and everything else on it? Now the cost for those cameras are somewhere around 15 to $25,000. Now just imagine if they had to place eight of those all over every single car. It would just make it so unaffordable and super expensive. I'm surprised the Lucid Air doesn't have it since those things are so expensive, but it doesn't make it affordable. There's gonna be some sort of technology that's gonna come out in the next 10 years that's gonna make using those cameras pretty much obsolete. It's gonna use some sort of other technology to read vehicles around it. And that's what we're waiting for. Now, normally I'd say the Tesla, I made jokes about them never being able to figure it out. They do have the furthest basically runway because they've already been working on it for so many years. But I think now that all the manufacturers are jumping in, you're gonna to start to see everybody catch up fairly quickly. But Apple spent, I believe it was 10 years and $10 billion and they couldn't even get to stage two of what they call self-driving, which is already in pretty much any Tesla you buy brand new. So why did they spend so much money on this? Now, they keep saying that it was investment into AI. They wanna use AI to figure out algorithms so this way their cars will be better to drive on the road. But I think that after spending all that money and realizing that building a car, a manufacturing plant, and then trying to sell this thing and make it fully automated would not work. Now there was talks of it to actually make it like a regular driving car, a steering wheel, drive-by wire, they wanted to be the first ones, but obviously that plan failed. Now we have the Cybertruck, that's the first drive-by wire vehicle uh, that's made in the United States. But all these things are starting to basically line up that Apple wasn't fully ready to push out this car. They didn't realize how much of an investment, how much of a headache would be to actually build this. Now Apple makes some amazing products, but a lot of people don't realize that the car game is an absolute grind when it comes to business-wise because your cars are constantly being depreciated in value. There's always somebody more willing to be cheaper than you. And then on top of that, nobody's really talking about this. I'm gonna make a separate video. China is getting ready to jump into the auto market. They got major manufacturing plants being built in Mexico to skip that 25% tariffs from cars coming over from China into Mexico or into the US. They're just gonna skip that, make them in Mexico and drive them up here. But once some of these cars get here, I'll have to show you some pictures. Um, they're talking brand new EVs with a 300 mile range for somewhere around, I think it was like nine to $15,000. Now, obviously we know the build quality is gonna be dog shit and you're probably not gonna be very reliable, but there's still a lot of people that would rather buy something like that or even a regular gas car that's much cheaper. So when the news broke that Apple was actually canceling the project of building an EV, it pretty much set the internet on fire and everybody was trying to figure out why. But they did have a positive spin. They said that their whole goal was to focus most of their time and their technologies and a lot of the people in there straight to AI because they believe that is the future. Now, I've seen a lot of things with this Vision Pro and they're getting torn apart literally all over YouTube and some of these other sites. I haven't had one yet, but I have had a few people actually buy one and already return it because they said it's not that great and it's just like a Vision Quest, but I can't really say because I haven't really tested it myself. So I think that everybody's leaning into AI because this is such a hot button, but do you remember what was a hot button about five years ago and also during the pandemic? EVs. So I feel like we're constantly chasing that new trend that's going to kind of shift the market and get whatever investors to put more money into their companies. So I'm actually kind of sad that Apple didn't come up with this product because I would like to see more manufacturers jump into the auto segment when it comes to EVs because there's a lot of these new smaller companies that are coming out but they just don't have the capital. You already see things on the news like Lucid Air and Rivian running out of money. They, you know, they're, they're trying to build the scale. They're trying to get so many cars out there so this way it hopefully gets cheaper. The only only EV company that's actually making money, I believe, is Tesla. They're profiting somewhere around $3,300 
uh, net off of every single car they sell, which is not great, but it's still something. Now the Chinese manufacturer, which is supposedly the largest EV distributor in the world, says they make somewhere around $1,800. But of course, numbers from China, you can't believe anything they put out. So I, I think they're actually losing money as well. But I feel that Apple would have enough brand recognition and enough capital where they could basically survive the hump and actually put out some really good products. So I think in the next few years, we're gonna see a death of a lot of uh, futuristic EV companies kind of going along to the wayside because all they're gonna do is get bought up by all these other companies and they're gonna basically pirate or, or rob their technologies and then just throw out the corpses out with everything else because this is where we're at now. Now it's a rush to see who can make the best uh, fully automated car and who could actually get the best battery technology. And I know it's gonna be something hilarious. It's gonna be some small manufacturer, probably somebody from Europe, that's gonna make an amazing ceramic battery that's gonna get there. Now, right now, for a ceramic battery to be put into a car, supposedly the battery would cost about $80,000. I know the technology is gonna get better hopefully here soon. Another thing that's scaring a lot of manufacturers is the fact of the materials. It's getting harder and harder to get the materials to build a battery, and costs are going up, and they can't get them at enough supply. We have batteries for cars, we have batteries for cell phones, electronics, so mines are being overworked. Now, of course, you'll never see this in US news, but I like to actually watch news from other countries, and and it kind of opens your eyes to some of the things that we're really not noticing. I recommend you do the same thing. And they're all talking about the same thing. Even if we were to switch to 20% EVs all across the world, we would run out of materials to actually make batteries. So how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna walk this back? And I think that's another thing that's a really big scare for being all electric by 2030. I don't think it's ever gonna happen. When it comes to doing heavy work or long distances or just the fact of some sort of liability, we're always gonna go to an internal combustion engine because those cars have over 100 years of technology, they're good to go, you could drive them for two, 300,000 miles. Even like my cars that I got now today, like my 67 Mustang, I'll never sell it, I'll keep it to the day I die. Even if gas is 50 bucks a gallon, I don't care, I'm still gonna keep it. So I believe that ICE vehicles will still be on the road, but I think that EVs are gonna become more and more dominant in the next 20 years. Not in the next 10 years, but in the next 20 years, I think we'll get somewhere around 40%. But what the government's trying to push right now is an absolute joke. Like I said, there's no demand for it, People don't want it. And especially if you're just a regular person looking at buying a car, the fact that you can lose 50% of your value in one year is very scary. And I think that's keeping a lot of people from buying an EV. And then on top of that, a lot of the people that are currently in EVs are going out buying gas cars just as a second vehicle, just to make sure they have something else as a backup. Well, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Please, in the comment section below, let me know what you guys think of the Apple EV and also some of the EV markets that are going on across the world because I know right now here in the States, it's getting very, very hard to resell your used car and I'd like to see if it's a little bit different anywhere else. Also, if you're in the United States, if you have anybody else that's actually buying something like this, please share in the comment section You know what you're seeing in your market. The whole purpose of this channel is to be transparent about the automotive industry and even if your opinion is different from mine, that's okay, we could still be friends. But I wanna thank you guys once again for watching and we'll see you next time.